Hello everyone. This is one of the monkeys that my friend and I met in Rishikesh, India on the shores of the Ganges River where we were trying to do some peaceful watercolor plein air and these monkeys were surrounding us and all seemed fine until uh, it all went downhill. On our way back uh, up the mountain from um, the river, after we finished our plein airs, we saw this group of monkeys and uh, I looked one of them in the face and he was missing one of his eyes. And I mentioned it to my friend Jordan. I was about to say, well, look at that monkey. He only has one eye. And uh, I guess he spoke English because he got offended. And all of a sudden he went crazy. He started screaming, ah. And uh, all the other monkeys looking at this one went crazy too. Started screaming at us and uh, attacked. Unfortunately for Jordan, he was closer to the monkeys. Uh, we quickly knew that it was time to turn around and run. Uh, Jordan was uh, behind me and uh, this crazy monkey was uh, biting at his heels. It was uh, quite close to be honest, uh, probably had rabies. So it wasn't the best uh, situation, but it happens when you travel. So uh, we ran from the monkeys back down the mountain. Luckily, some locals uh, saw us running from the monkeys and uh, they threw some rocks at them and yelled at them to uh, stop. And uh, luckily these rocks had the result of uh, the monkeys backing down and we were okay, but uh, a little bit of an uncomfortable moment nevertheless. Anyways, this was a photo that I took of one of the monkeys jumping before that happened. How could I miss the opportunity to commemorate such a pleasant meeting of the minds without doing an old painting of it? And as always, as you can see, I start without a drawing and uh, I just go in right away with the direct colors. It's something that works for me, but a lot of people say that they prefer to have a tight drawing underneath. I don't know why, but it just doesn't work with my brain. You have to determine what works best for you. And for me, doing this uh, direct approach with no drawing is what works best. In my reference, in the top right of the water and the bottom left, I could see some transparency showing a warm color underneath. So in my painting, after I painted in the, the color of the water, I used a rag with some transparent yellow oxide to wipe down those corners to create a sense of transparency by thinning out the paint with a transparent yellow oxide. I feel that that strategy is a little bit more effective than if I actually painted it directly in thick paint. After all, if what you're trying to show is transparent, you can actually use the transparency of the oil paint to your advantage. I only used two or three brushes throughout creating this piece. My main driver was this uh, bristle brush that I have with an irregular tip that helps me create the edges of the fur. Those hairy line textures you're seeing everywhere was created with this uh, destroyed brush. The bristle brush is quite hard, so the tip of it, the, the little hairs, the bristles at the end, they cause these hard line textures that you're seeing me create now. And then I use the smaller brush for some tiny details like the nostrils and things like that. The way I got this bristle brush with the regular tip is simply by using a bristle brush a lot on some harsh canvases. And over time, it broke down the bristles and created this irregular pattern that helps me get the interesting edges that I need. So sometimes a worn out brush is exactly what you want. When working on the monkey, what's important to keep in mind are the edges. And there's two reasons for why they should be soft pretty much everywhere. Reason one is that the monkey is soft. The fur is soft and it's not made of metal or something like that. So to show the soft nature of the fur, it helps to have soft edges. That makes sense. But additionally, perhaps an equally important reason 
is that the monkey is in movement. So if you were to paint this monkey with a hard edge silhouette, you're gonna find that your monkey looks like it's frozen in the air as opposed to during a dynamic movement. For the feet, I really wanted to keep things simple and make sure that they look like the feet are in the middle of a movement. So to do that, we're gonna have soft edges all around the silhouette and we're gonna try and keep the detail down to a minimum. This should bring the feet back in space and help the hands come forward, which have a little bit more detail as compared to the feet. You'll see by the time I'm done the feet, how loosely rendered they end up being. You can see me now using a very soft brush to create these soft edges. The soft hairs of this brush help create a blurred edge that gives us a sense of movement that I want. The mixture for the water is white, viridian, cobalt blue, and raw umber. And I want to paint the water pretty thick in some places, so I'm mixing up a lot. As I put these thick brush strokes all over the water, I take care to preserve that thin, warm transparency in the top right corner and the bottom left corner. An important thing to take note of is the difference between my approach on the rocks and the monkey. I was very conscious of wanting the monkey to feel like it's a soft object that's moving very fast, whereas the rocks are static and they're hard. So the thing to do is to use hard edges in the rocks to make sure that they look like they're supposed to. I just used some Gamsol to rub out the paint and create a transparency in the water. Because this is a lead primed artifacts aluminum panel, it allows me to take off the paint even after four or five hours of painting. That's what lead priming helps us to do. Now I'm just taking care of the random debris in the water. This is a part of a, a leaf of a flower of some sort. There's a bunch of leaves like that in the water and some random stuff that I feel creates a, a surface texture for the water that is interesting. I felt like this painting was missing some juicy palette knife action. So I'm bringing that in at the end on the rocks in the foreground. Putting the palette knife there also helps the rocks come forward and they're actually the closest thing to us in the scene, so it works well. Painting animals is a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed it every time I've done it. I'm very happy with the final result here as well. So enjoy this painting from the safety of your home and uh, it won't attack you like uh, this monkey attacked us.